Good morning. So I just wanted to make a, a quick video about truss uplift. It's something I wasn't aware of <clears throat> until recently and um, can't, haven't found a whole lot of information about it on the internet. Thought it might be a good thing to just go over quickly. So truss uplift is when when you use trusses uh, to for the roof of your of a structure, um, the the and you bury the bottom of the trusses and maybe I can get a picture here of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but when so a truss is you know an, an engineered uh, structural member, and uh, this bottom cord, what they call the cord. Uh, that's that your ceiling attaches to gets buried in insulation in some structures. So in this home, in our home, we're going to have insulation here. So this will be in insulation. It'll be kept, you know, at a relatively constant temperature. Whereas those the upper cord <clears throat> where the sheathing for the roof is um, will be exposed to to the highs and lows temperatures throughout the year. So in particular in winter, when that gets really cold um, and, and there's some contraction going on, it, it can cause this bottom cord to then bow. And they talk about there being up to three quarters of an inch of, of uh, lift on, we have a 40 foot span, a lift on that, in that 40 feet. <clears throat> so to address this, uh, one of the things you do is use these clips on all interior walls that will allow the trusses to go up and down. So it's secured to our uh, interior wall and then there's this groove, a slot here, that allows um, the truss to go up and down as it contracts or as it moves throughout the year. Um, so those go on each side of uh, interior wall uh, framing and uh, <clears throat> um, th that takes care of, helps deal with that movement. Now the, now the other part is how, if, 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 you're, if these are moving and you're attaching your sheetrock, your drywall to them for your ceiling, how do you keep them um, from not cracking? So uh, at, at our members, or at the interior walls here, we have to put in something <clears throat> to to float from from out here. So from here, there's. <clears throat> let me back up a little bit so you can get a better idea. So you anywhere from you don't want to put any screws in your drywall within 16 inches of where you intersect an interior wall. So we're gonna attach to this truss, and then, there won't, then here we can't attach to the truss because it'll be moving, and we wanna attach to the wall. So what we're doing is putting, putting blocking in like you're seeing right here, that we can then attach our sheet, ceiling sheetrock to, so it'll stay, uh, <clears throat> down where the wall is while the rest of the ceiling can float up and down or move up and down uh, with the trusses. Um, the, building, the Building Science Corp has um, some papers on, on how to deal with up, truss uplift and explains it. Um, and otherwise I haven't found a lot of information. There's information on how to float uh, sheetrock, floating ceilings, floating walls, floating corners. And so um, that information's out there as well <clears throat> to, for help. Um, but in a nutshell, that's kind of truss uplift. Um, it's this whole uh, dealing with uh, a structural member that where parts are moving in, in different directions at different times of the year. Um, so that's it. Thanks.